So Tarkov Arena has been out for roughly about a month now, and tons of creators have given their opinions on it, and you're gonna find that some either love it, or they hate it. Well, I've been playing this somewhat religiously since I got back from holidays on the 7th up until this video, and there's a lot that I'm going to say, some of which may surprise you. So let's go ahead and rage report everyone and contemplate your time spent as we talk about Tarkov Arena. And if you enjoy what you see today, be sure to sub to the channel. Okay, let's continue. All right, so to kick things off, I want to address the time it's taken for people to get into the arena because the words that came out of Nikita's mouth were along the lines of, EOD holders would get access first. You sure about that? Then it was the players holding EOD the longest got in. You sure about that? But then it just turned into, eh, whoever spends money will get in first. Yeah, people that were buying Tarkov Arena the day it launched were getting in hours later, while people that were holding EOD for years on end couldn't even get in. And I even did a quick poll on YouTube and Twitter, and even though there weren't a lot of votes to it, there are people that still cannot get into this very day. I have an IRL friend that has not gotten in, and he's been an EOD holder I think since 2019, 2020. The launch was so damn sloppy, it's chilling in the nosebleed seats with the likes of Fallout 76, Cyberpunk, Anthem, and the list keeps going. To put things into perspective, I've been an EOD holder since 2020, but didn't get access until the 24th of December. I wasn't even able to play Arena because I was out of town, so I just had the email sitting and just waiting. There were some players that been holding EOD longer than I did who didn't even get day one access. That's just so damn wild to me, right? And I don't understand how Battlestate could have screwed up that bad. And Battlestate, if there's a laundry list of shit you gotta do to fix Tarkov, this needs to be a high priority until everyone gets into Arena. Now that we got that out of the way, it's time to get into the actual game itself. And I'm going to break this down in the simplest way possible. You take a preset or PMC into the Arena. If you win, you gain ARP. If you lose, you lose ARP. ARP is applied towards your rank, which you start at 1500 ARP or D plus AKA Jackal rank. This is pretty much what MMR is in games like Rainbow Six Siege, but they just call it ARP in this game. For each rank you hit, you unlock more PMCs, but you can use these PMCs to unlock better PMCs, but it will cost you more and more money the further down the tree you go. Your main objective in team fight is to kill all enemies while you have a time limit. If the timer runs out, you'll have to capture the objective or kill the rest of the enemies. If neither happen, scavs come in and you become poisoned. Whoever survives the longest wins. Everything from armor to bullets and I'm pretty sure skills affect the gameplay, so your best bet is to accept the fact that this game is hell and don't expect your win loss or KD to mean anything to you. So yeah, that's the basics, but it's within the basics that I feel like things can get a little advanced, especially when it comes to unlocking presets. You see, the concept is simple but the execution is what's scuffed here. Perfect example, while I was working to get Blackjack, me and some IRL friends faced off against this stupid bastard right here, Guardian. He's got a class six helmet and class five body armor and enough firepower to conquer the world. This man can get hit with the force of a thousand nukes and think a fly landed on him. This dude dry scoops protein powder and chugs it down with nothing but saliva. You wanna know what most of the people in the lobby had at the time? These guys. All free, all dog shit. Except this dude, Champion. Arguably, he's got one of the best guns you can get while progressing through all the other different presets, which brings me to one of the mini gripes that I have with this spinoff, the progression. Tarkov Arena is the poster child of something that doesn't respect your time invested, much like the base game. For example, for winning one game, you get 25 ARP. If you lose, you lose 25 ARP. On top of that, in a good game where I've gotten 10 plus kills, I walk away with maybe 8,000 XP if I'm lucky. To me, not only is the ARP grind tedious, but it feels so goddamn boring and borderline not even worth committing your time to. The fact that I've seen people that are already in the C ranks or even B ranks baffles me on an astronomical level. The XP is fine, I guess. I mean, the XP you gain towards your player rank will also be counted towards your progression for other presets. At least that's what it's supposed to do, but it sure as hell doesn't feel like it. Now, it sounds all good and dandy until you try to go from unlocking a 50k XP preset to a 150k XP preset. Plus, your XP is always fluctuating and all this other shit, so just prepare for the slow climb. Also, prepare to factor in how many wins you have to get to recoup your losses because your preset costs go from 0 to 100 real damn quick. For example, I run Blackjack, and he costs about 104,000 rubles to run. If I lose, 
I've pretty much got to play and win two games to make up for losing one. That doesn't sound bad until you factor in presets that cost 500,000 rubles or even a million rubles. Another big gripe that I have is that nothing is consistent. Y you know what? Actually, I, I take that back, okay? There is one thing that Tarkov Arena is pretty consistent at. It's consistent at being unbalanced to all hell. If the dude running around with class 6 armor wasn't enough to prove my point, Allow me to elaborate even further with this. With wearing this helmet, I've been Tarkov'd by the Keter and the Glock more times than someone using the same damn weapon I have. And I know a few of you are already typing in the comments. Well, Blackout, it's actually because he was running a 9x19mm AP 6.3 while you were wearing a class 3 helmet. If you look at this chart right here, AP 6.3 ammo will pierce any helmet at or below class 3 with ease. That's why you're always getting your ass cheeks clapped, Blackout. Listen, I can understand why some people enjoy studying different ammo types. I really can, right? But is it really necessary in an arena shooter setting? I don't care if you love Tarkov or you despise it, you need to ask yourself if being that fucking nitpicky is needed in any arena shooter. If you say yes, then why? Because I can't find one perfectly good reason. Oh, it makes the game competitive. You can make this game competitive based off the mechanics alone, not even factoring in ammo types or any of this other shit. And just to throw this in here, if you're not struggling to keep up with Johnny over here with rounds that'll have you looking like you tried to bear hug a garbage disposal and lost, you'll be struggling to keep up with two of the most prominent issues that still plague Tarkov to this very day, desync and cheaters. Starting with the desync, I had maybe a 1 in 64th speck of hope that Battlestate would have figured this shit out by now. The game's been in beta since 2017, it was speculated that in 2020 it made 120 million dollars, and apparently Arena has been worked on for a handful of years. Why are the servers being held together by what feels like electrical tape and DSL internet? Has it gotten better? I mean, I think. I mean, it's not what Landmark experienced, I can tell you that much, but there are moments like what I'm about to show you that make me question how the studio has made so much money. So just to paint the scene, I'm on the equator map. I'm on the Adix side, slowly creeping along the side of the map. I keep looking into the middle because I think there's someone going to run up. I turn back to where I'm walking. And I get fucking Oswalded out of nowhere. Now let's take a gander. Yep, the guy is nowhere. Blackout, he's actually right there. You know what? I'll humor you. Let's say he's right here. But let's see his point of view. Look at how far he was out in the open before I even saw him on my end. Battlestate, I will never understand how you can create such an advanced game, but have servers that were ripped straight out of an early 2010 COD lobby. But if it's not the desync, it's the cheaters. And thankfully, I don't run into a lot of them. But when I do, they're your typical rage cheaters that'll wall you and be very obvious about it. I can tell that the battle I anti-cheat is working very hard right now. In all seriousness, there's really nothing you can do about it except report them and cross your fingers you're blessed with one of these messages the next time you launch Tarkov Arena. I've got a little bit more to say near the end of the video, but I want to segue into some positives that I've experienced with Tarkov Arena, surprisingly enough. First one has to be the maps. Sorta. All of them except two are pretty solid to play on. The flow of the maps are good and what you would expect from an arena shooter. In fact, I've actually really grown to like both Equator and Air Pit. However, there are two maps that almost completely ruined whatever positives I had to say about these maps. Those two being Sawmill and Bull. Nikita, you know, I, I doubt he'll ever see this, I keep addressing him directly, but Nikita, find whoever designed these maps and fire them. Sawmill is a map built for those who unironically like woods and have a fetish for touching virtual grass. Don't even bother playing this fucking map. Bowl is probably the worst design map for a lot of reasons, okay? This thing flows about as well as a turd going down the Grand Rapids. But the fact that you have two sniper towers and people can camp with cars, Mosins, or SKSs is such a bullshit aspect of this map. Oh, and pair that with the fact that you can just camp the tower, hide from scavs, and continuously heal, it just makes the game a giant snooze fest. While I do like the maps that we currently have in Tarkov Arena, I'm a little disappointed that there aren't more maps considering they're more than likely using assets to build these arena maps from their base game counterparts. 
but hey, three out of five ain't bad. I would take three out of five good maps than to have five really mediocre or even five really bad ones. Now, despite what I've said about Arena from the maps to the presets to the core gameplay, you would think that I'm about to say stay the hell away from it and you'd be right if I wasn't sort of having fun with it. I didn't think I would see the day where so many of my creator friends were saying that this was a dog shit attempt at rehashing one of Battlestate's older games. But surprisingly enough, you get a couple of friends with you and it actually becomes a really good experience. Does that change the fact that the game is still inconsistent and that it's still buggy and that you're going to face people that have already maxed out a skill tree? No. In fact, Sometimes, it may discourage you from even wanting to play this with friends in the first place. But it feels good knowing that you bring along someone for the ride and they're suffering just as much as you. It makes the grind to getting better presets much more worth it in my opinion. And this is coming from someone that sees Tarkov as a game that became popular for really no reason except for the fact that it was deemed incredibly difficult. I can see the appeal for those that enjoy extraction shooters or even extraction royales, but even then, I feel like there's so many better options out there. But there's something about Tarkov Arena that makes me enjoy it more than the base game, and I think it's that you actually get right to the action. There's none of this going back to the menu, sorting out your stash, throwing on your equipment, going in, dying, and then having to repeat the same bullshit process every single raid. And on top of that, I just don't want to have to struggle my way through learning the core mechanics of the game and study a whole goddamn wiki for the game just to understand what I need to do. That isn't fun for me. I don't want to have to willingly struggle and lose all my gear just to increase my PMC skills in the hope that I can win a 1v1 gunfight. That isn't fun for me. But what is fun for me is inviting some friends, picking a preset, getting into a one life mode, and facing off against five other people. Now there is a 2v2 and 3v3 tournament mode called Shootout, but I'm not touching that damn game mode considering how cheeks the progression is. Again, do you have to struggle a little bit in Arena to get a better preset? Yeah but the struggle doesn't feel nearly as bullshit as the base game struggle. Plus, you're given a chance to kill other players even if there's one that's built like Brock Lesnar in the early 2000s. For my final thoughts, and to keep things a little short, would I recommend Tarkov Arena right now? Honestly, no. Not at the moment. Even with the balancing update in December, it's still an unbalanced hellhole of a game. But if you're wanting to get into Tarkov and you don't want to waste your money on the base game, buy Arena. Keep in mind that it's nowhere near the experience you're going to get in the base game of Tarkov, but it's a much better experience than the base game of Tarkov. What I would love to see is more balancing with the presets, faster progression for ARP so it doesn't feel like I'm winning games for nothing, and better maps. Hell, I'll even take some original maps. What Battlestate needs to do at the moment is improve other parts of the game and really dedicate themselves to at least improving the desync issues even more. And I'm probably gonna get some diehard dedicated Tarkov chads telling me to go back to COD or Fortnite or some copium fueled response. And there's two things I wanna say to that. One, thanks for helping me pay my bills by watching long enough to say something. And two, I don't know if it's in the water or if it's in the air, but it seems like only the Tarkov stands are allowed to hate and complain about the game and those who haven't done shit like unlock the flea market aren't allowed to say anything if that ain't the most elementary school shit i've ever heard hey guys you can't talk about this game because i'm better at it than you what you sink a few thousand hours into knowing that pp ammo is slightly better than ps ammo and some of y'all think that you're the only one allowed to critique and comment on a game oh but blackout it's not because of that you just have a skill issue <laughs> it's official darwinism has been proven courtesy of the chads we have returned to monkey as far as gaming logic goes. Do me a favor, go to the flea market, see if Fence has a book on architecture so you can build a bridge and get the fuck over yourself. I know it's not all of you. In fact, I'm confident that 90% of the Tarkov community can't stand the know-it-all stands, but they're the ones that tend to speak the loudest, unfortunately. Now I turn the mic to you. Let me know down below what you think about Tarkov Arena. And while you're down there, go ahead and cheeky that like button and breaky that sub button to all so YouTube can show you my content free of charge. I want to thank my current members at the moment for supporting this channel outside of watching and commenting. Y'all are absolute legends. Thank you so much. This is Sir Blackout signing off to go play Tarkov Arena. Maybe when I hit retirement age, I'll be out of the jackal rank. Ah, uh, later.